Who are we to deny the miracle-working power of Jesus, which is at work today in our world? You know, there's a, there's a narrative, there's a noise, there's a sound that's trying to override the sound and the noise and the narrative of the church, that the church is ineffective and the church is not doing all that it's called to do. But can I tell you, that is untrue. What is true is that God is at work. He's moving in our world today. So let me encourage you to be the kind of people that believe what Jesus says, to believe the God of the Bible, that your God is here for you, with you, fighting for you. He's not absent. He's not distant. He's not far off in another place, but he's with you right now. And he is actively participating in your plan to see your life built upon the things that he promised you from the very beginning of time. And so as we move into this final message of this series, which is all about your money, I went to God about this particular message and said, God, you know, this is the last one of the series about finance. I really want to get this right. I really want to make sure that our people across the life of our church here in our Cessnock location, our friends in Toronto, our friends in Scone, our online community, hear the best message they've ever heard about money. God. Anyway, God said, I don't really want you to talk about money today. <laughs> I said, yes, you do. He said, no, no, don't argue with me. And so, so we came to a compromise. So you ready for this? Yeah. The title of this morning's message is Financial Faithfulness Releases Financial Favour. But what I want you to look at here is that you could put anything there. Faithfulness in any area of your life releases favour in any area of your life. Or you could read it like this. Faithfulness in every area of your life releases favour in every area of your life. And so for some reason, God was very clear about this message today. For us in this room, for those of us joining online, for all Of our locations. So let me take you to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. It says this For every thing there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest. Just turn to the person next to you and tell them, I think it's time to harvest. I think it's time to harvest. Just let them know. Don't, come on, be brave. Make a new friend. That's it. Write it in the chat. It's time to harvest. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. Come on, if you didn't dance in the first song this morning, we're going to sing it again later and you are going to be the one dancing up here on the platform with Luke and Zara. There's a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to, you know, I, that's, actually, that's actually a word for someone here today. It's a time to search, but there's a time to stop searching. Sometimes you've, you know, there's, there's some people that are looking for something that's actually already been delivered to them. Yeah, they've got it right now. They're in the right place at the right time. That could be you. You're in the right place at the right time but you're still searching and I think God might be saying to you, there's a time for searching, yes, but there's a time to quit searching. There's a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear down and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak. Church, you can speak right now. We're going to participate together in this message. The Pentecostal hermeneutic of preaching is that we engage together as a community. It's not all about me, it's about us. And so when you think something's resonating with you, let someone know about it. Open your mouth, vocalise. You can say, did you hear what he said? That was great. You could say amen. You could say preach it. You could say, oh, that hurts. Keep quiet. Don't say that again. I'm convicted in the name of Jesus. There's a time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And verse 11 says this, to wrap it all up, it says, Yet God has made everything, everybody say everything. Everything. That's right. Everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. See, beauty is promised to you in every season. In death, in life. In tearing down, in building up. In loss, in gain. In searching, in satisfaction. In every season of your life, the Bible says you can find beauty and favour. 
every season. But I know there are some people here now who are in a season where they don't seem to be able to find the beauty or feel the favour. Online, in our scone location, Toronto, you might feel stuck. And the season you are in, he's promising you that you should be finding favour. How do things look so beautiful when I'm struggling in my financial situation, in my health challenges? How am I meant to find beauty, favour in that? My family relationships are falling apart. My marriage is struggling. I am anxious, worried, stressed, concerned in the season that I find myself in. But so, Luke, you're telling me that this verse is saying that I should be able to find beauty in every season. You see, this verse says that there's, there's a deposit of eternity and eternal significance in your heart, that God puts eternity in you, eternal destiny in your heart. But the thing is, we don't often get to see, as that verse says, how that is outworked in every season. Because we have to suffer through the best of times and the worst of times, despite being promised that eternity and eternal destiny and eternal significance is our inheritance. So today what I want to do for everyone who is listening to this or if you're listening to late, back later, I want to prophesy something over us today. I want to prophesy a season of harvest for our church, for your family, for your financial world, for your business, for your vocation, for your ministry, for your health, for your kids. I want to just declare that this is a season for you to find beauty in every situation that you are going through. And so God brought me to this moment to show us how we can find favour in every season, financial favour in every season, relationship breakthrough in every season, beauty in every struggle that we face. There is one word that answers this question, and I've already given it to you. Do you know what it is? Faithfulness. Oh, come on. The front row gets a gold star. <laughs> Write it in the chat. Faithfulness. Have a look on the screen. Is this. It's steadfast in affection or allegiance, loyal, firm in adherence to promises or in observance of duty, given with strong assurance, true to the facts, to a standard, to an original, to be faithful, to be faithful. And if we're going to see beauty and favour in every season from here to eternity, then we're going to be faithful people. We're going to be faithful people. From death, in seasons of death and in seasons of life, I want to encourage us today to remain faithful. When we're sowing and when we're reaping, remain faithful. When we're sick and when we're healthy, remain faithful. Online's louder than the room. I can hear the keyboards from Toronto. They're louder than the room. When there's devastation or restoration, we will remain faithful. Oh, wow. Come on. Come on. When there's tears or when there's laughter, we'll remain faithful. When there's lack or when there's abundance, we remain faithful. In every season, we'll remain faithful. Oh, come on. We are going to remain faithful. A faithful People, the Bible teaches us that faithfulness. And here you go, here's the promise. Here it's coming down the line. I hope you're ready for it. It's going to be like a fire hydrant. Hold on to your seat. These four, these four uh, points I'm going to bring this morning. It's, the Bible teaches that that, that favour is released to us in these four ways. And I think if we take these with us today, this can change not just our finances, but can change our future in every area of our life. So are you ready for these? Faithfulness releases destiny. Faithfulness releases your destiny. Destiny. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 to 35, make sure you write that last heading down. Faithfulness releases destiny. So I'm going to give you a test a bit later. No, you can't have it back. You just have to go back one slide, guys. All right, that's enough. Don't you, don't you remember... The author of Hebrews writing to the church, don't you remember those days right after the light shined in your hearts? You endured 
what does it say? A great marathon season of suffering and hardships, yet you stood your ground. You were what? You were faithful. And at times you were publicly and shamefully mistreated, being persecuted for your faith. Then at other times you stood side by side with those who preached the message of hope. In other words, you were suffering, but then you were winning. You sympathized with those in prison. And when all your belongings were confiscated, you accepted the violation with joy, convinced that you possess a treasure growing in heaven that, you could, that could never be taken away from you. So don't lose your bold, courageous faith. Come on, faith. For you are destined, everybody say destined, destined for a great reward. Faithfulness releases destiny. So here's my challenge. Church, don't sabotage your God-ordained future by quitting today. Don't sabotage your own God-ordained destiny by quitting today. So today what I do right now is I speak boldness and courage over every single person. I want to just speak faithfulness into you today and pray that you see the reward of his destiny released over over your life. Lord God, right now we just speak boldness, we speak courage, just prophetically impart faithfulness into every single person under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Let your Holy Spirit, let your Holy Spirit just impart, imbue every person with the new courage. In Jesus' name, I pray, I pray. Come on, faithfulness releases destiny. Faithfulness also releases victory. Faithfulness releases victory. Do you feel like a loser today? Good, 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 good. That's good, I'm pleased. Faithfulness releases victory. It's a silly question to ask, isn't it? All right. Faithfulness releases victory. Let's have a look at this. James chapter 1, verse 12, it says this. If your faith remains strong, yeah, sometimes you can have weak faith. We're going to be strong in our faith. Even while we're sur- surrounded by life's difficulties, you will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. True happiness comes as you pass the test with faith. Come on, faithfulness, and receive the what? Victorious crown of life promised to every lover of God. You are in a battle today. You might not have realized this, but I'm here to bring the front page news to you that you are in a battle, that you are fighting today. You might think, well, I don't feel like I'm in a fight. Well, I'm just letting you know. Because our battle isn't against flesh and blood, the Bible says. It's, about, it's a battle. It's a spiritual battle against other things that are going on in the spiritual area of our lives. And so sometimes it might feel like things are moving along okay, but, don't, but let me tell you, you are engaged in a spiritual battle every day of your life that you continue to say yes to Jesus. And so if we want to see victory, it's on the other side of the level of faithfulness that we engage with that battle. So I wonder how faithful you are in in continuing to engage in that spiritual battle. In 1999, it was a good year. It was the year that that was the year that I got married. Just 20. Yes, that's right. The Haywoods celebrate 23 years this year. Big round of 24, 24 year, 25 years this year. Next year, how many this year? How many? 24 years. So 1999 was the year we got married, uh, Rachel and I, and we. Prayed, prayed to God and said, God, you know, where, where do you want us to go? What do you want us to do? You know, we were blessed to kind of both be people of God and we, we love Jesus and we were serving together in our Christian school, in our separate churches. We came together and we said, God, what do you want us to do? Where do you want us to go? And we both felt very strongly that God called us to this community, uh, to, to serve him here in this place. And so we did that. We got married. We said, right, let's come to this church and let's just get, get amongst it and serve Jesus. And then God gave us like visions and dreams and destiny and promises for the future. And we're like, God, this is so good. We're loving this. This is amazing. And we're faithfully serving him. And then almost every two or three years, uh, you see our church, this church is 30, about 35 years old. And when we, we've been leading the church for 10, for 10 years we're the longest serving pastors that the church has had. Before us, the guy who was serving as a senior pastor of our church was serving for six years, and he was the second longest serving pastor, and he was an interim pastor. <laughs> and then, the, so for every other couple of years before that, we had a new pastor. And every time we had a new pastor, they had new ideas, and the church grew, and the church was healthy, and we were encouraged, and we were inspired, and we were going for, on for God. And then in about two years' time, things would fall apart, and they'd leave, and then we'd be heartbroken. and discouraged and we'd go to God on our knees and say, God, this is not the plan, the destiny, the future that we had in mind that you told us we would see. 
We must have made a mistake. We're in the wrong place at the wrong time for what you want to do in and through our lives. And so that wasn't one prayer we prayed like that or two. That was many prayers we prayed like that over many years. And really, as I've shared this story before, because heaven was silent, it's the loudest I've ever heard God speak to me. You know what to do. You know where I've called you. As soon as something changes, you'll be the first to know. And so we stayed faithfully serving and giving financially into, I mean, one, oh, I can't really put that online, but, you know, faithfully giving financially into the, into the life of the church. And who knows when you give financially to something and it goes backwards, you get a little bit discouraged about that too. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Despite the challenges and, you know, newly married and just trying to go after God, God said, just keep turning up. Faithfulness releases victory. You know, for those of you who know the story of our church, uh, today it is a different church than what it was 20 years ago because we have a great community of people who are willing to do what it takes to see the things of God at work in and through their life for the sake of their community that they call home. And so you should be commended because faithfulness releases victory. So I can encourage you that if you're thinking about maybe it's time to quit, give up, move on, I want to remind you, and God wants to remind you today, that faithfulness releases victory in your life. In your situation, faithfulness releases victory. Faithfulness releases honour. <laughs> come on, team. Come up. Come up. We're nearly, we're nearly going to wrap up here. Faithfulness releases honour. Faithfulness releases honour. I want to speak this into your life. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, the Bible says, Let love... And faithfulness never leave you. In other words, faithfulness tries to run away from you sometimes and you've got to take it by the neck and you've got to bring it back. And you've got to say, no, 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 you belong here with me. It goes on to say, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favour and a good name or honour in the sight of God and man. I I love this because this verse doesn't say that you'll be honoured in your community, that you'll be honoured in your church, that you'll be honoured in your friend with your friend group, that you'll be honoured by God if you are successful, if you are rich, if you're intelligent, thank you, Jesus, if you are attractive. It says that you will find favour with God and with people if you are, if you are, if you are, If you want to have people honour you in your world, if you want to be parents that are honoured, if you want to be bosses that are honoured, if you want to be an employee that is honoured, if you want to be a business owner that is honoured, if you want to be a person in your community that finds honour from all people, then you must be someone who is faithful. Faithful. Sometimes it just means turning up. You know, those last 23 years of my married life, I can't tell you that I had any great ideas. I know that this season in our life now, we do feel as though as a, as a family, we're honoured within our local community, within our church community, within our friends and our movement. We feel very honoured. But I can tell you, Rachel and I, it is not about, it is not about how attractive we are. It is not about how intelligent we are. It's not about how rich we are or successful or smart. It is because really we just kept turning up. Sometimes you just have to keep turning up. You just have to keep saying, yes, I'll be there. I'll serve. I'll be on team. I'll say, yes, I'll come in early and I'll, I'll stay back late. I'll come and give you a hand with that. I'll host a life group. Oh, it used to be 20 people. Now it's six, but I'll keep hosting. It's down to two. I'll keep hosting. I'll just keep turning up. I'll keep believing God for what's a better future ahead because I know that faithfulness releases honour in my life. Faithfulness releases victory in my life. Faithfulness releases destiny over my life. And finally, Faithfulness releases salvation. So I wonder who who you have been praying for recently to find salvation in their life. It might be a family member, it could be a friend of yours. I wonder who you've been praying for recently to find salvation for themselves can I encourage you to keep praying, to remain faithful, because faithfulness will release victory in that situation. Faithfulness will release their destiny in that situation. 
faithfulness will release honour for them. So come on, who are you praying for and believe in God for? You know, we, we want to pray together with you in a moment just to believe God that salvation you know, will come to every single person that's on your heart that you believe in God for. Let's just pray and believe for revival you know, right across the life of our church that many people come to know Jesus. Many people in your world, in our community, we're going to pray for salvation. Because in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, it says this, For if we are faithful to the end. So come on. We're going to be a people of God who are faithful, 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 and then faithful, and then faithful, and then faithful again, Tom, right to the end. Now, Tom's got a HSC fortnight coming up. He's finished a few exams. He's got two, he's got a maths exam coming up tomorrow. And then he's got another week off holiday. And then he's got two more exams, biology and business. It's, it's easy when you've got a bit of a, a lull or a break to just take the foot off the accelerator. But the people of God, we are faithful to the end. Tom's leading by example. So we're going to be people in our world, whatever we're facing and we're leaning into this week, we're going to be faithful to the end, believing and trusting God, it says, just as firmly as when we first believed. Because sometimes we can lose our grip on our faith over time. Over time, our grip begins to loosen and we begin to just lightly hold on to the trust we have in God. Come on, let's be honest. We can all be like that. The grip on our trust in God can get a little loose over time. Well, this is a reminder. It's, it's, hey, come on, guys. If we are trusting God as firmly as when we first believe, then we'll share in all that belongs to Christ. All that belongs to Christ. Everything that He has for you can be yours. Yes, in your finances as we wrap up this series. Yes, in your relationships, in your marriage, with your children. Come on, in your business, in your vocation. You can find all that God has for you if you are faithful to the end, trusting Him as firmly as when you first believed. Come on, do you believe that word is for you today? Do you believe it's for you in your situation? Do you believe it's for you? Again, for the people that are watching online today, let us know. So every head bowed, every eye closed, we pray over you one more time. Before I do, if you're in this room or online and you want to make a first time declaration of faithfulness in Jesus, if you've never done that before, then you know this message was for you. Don't hesitate. Raise your hand in the room or online, write it in the chat. Say, yes, that's me. I'm making a first time faithful commitment to Jesus in this moment. another week, Jesus. Another month, Lord God. Another year. This is the year. I'm going to give you another year. I'm going to believe again. Trust again. Because who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Because anything is possible. Anything is possible. Come on, church, let's sing. Anything is possible. Right, church, why don't you stand to your feet? Make a declaration today. Anything is possible. Who am I to deny Anything Thank you, is possible. I'll make this a prayer. Anything Lord Jesus, is possible. We say right now, declare to you, anything is possible. Anything in our family, is possible. With our kids, anything is possible. Come on, in our business, this is a year. Anything is possible. Anything, anything is possible. 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 Is possible
Amen.